This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Click on the link below for your two week free trial. How's it, how's it? Photography has the capacity to move us in a great many different ways. And of course, one of those ways is to make us feel disquieted, to feel uneasy that something's not quite right. Some of the spookiest images that have stayed with me in my mind certainly have been not paintings or, or unusual illustrations in books, but photographs that have burned themselves into my consciousness. And even now, in the dead of night, will linger and float into my mind's eye. So a nice, simple one to get started. Boom, 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 boom. Right, so we have a lady here, a German photographer called Loretta Lux. Now her photography is of some children and, you know, unusually surreal worlds. And, and I love the fact that there is just this kind of a disquiet going on. When you look at the, the faces of these kids, that they are certainly you know, normal looking children, but the world that they inhabit feels slightly unusual. And a lot of this is down to a, the way that, that Loretta Lux has, has photographed these things. And she's constructed a world using a blend of obviously traditional photography and, and digital manipulation. And I know in the past I've given digital manipulation a hard time, but you know what? It's not a major thing when it blends together so seamlessly like this does. So that's your starter, the unstrange, weird world of Loretta Lux. Ralph Eugene Meat Yard. Yes, and there's a word that you may not have heard before, but I know some of you have because you've been asking for him. And here we go. So we've got, this is his monograph, Dolls and Masks. And I'm not going to get too much into his background and why the photographs are the way that they are. But this is a classic example of photography that is odd, I think is a word, that especially in this book, he uses a great number of, you know, of masks on these, these kids and, and photographs that have a sense of unease about them. I think that's always a, a, good, a good word to use when talking about Ralph Eugene Meat Yard's photography. Unease, yes. Ralphie G. Meatyard is definitely a photographer who has slipped through the cracks somewhat, I feel that, and this is hardly surprising because his work is very challenging and, and I'm sure that a number of you watching this will kind of go, I really don't get it. It seems just a bit odd. It's one of those photographers who, when you show somebody outside of photography, this kind of book, they sort of look at you and go, um, you no, know, <laughs> you're just, just weird. And maybe that's what is in these photographs. They appeal to my inherent sense of, of weirdness. You know, I was, I, I was, was a student, you know, art student. I wanted to be weird. I was a goth and all that sort of thing. So all of these things tap into this kind of thing of going, look how strange I am. Look how awesome I am because I like Ralph Eugene Meat Yard. If that's you, hey, welcome to the club. Uh, but also, if it's not for you, that's perfectly fine because we're going to move on to the next photographer. So a complete change of pace here because we've got, bum, 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 bum. This is, if you can't see, Erwin Olaf. Now, his world that he creates in his photography isn't the weirdness of Ralph Eugene Meat Yard. It's not the... the subtle disquiet of Loretta Lux, but it's this hanging conversation that sits just above us where something odd is going on. Something weird is not quite being resolved here, which is an odd, odd thing to say, but that's the point. I think that in Erwin Olaf's photography is I can't really put my finger on the story. There is something going on and it, it confuses us and it makes us feel slightly uneasy because it's almost like we are kind of voyeurs in this world, which is getting, drifting into the realm of me sort of talking about, you know, things in a kind of artsy farty sort of way. And now we don't really want to do that. But I like this. His, his photography reminds me of same sort of the Japanese and the, the Asian sort of horror films where they're, they're, they're a lot more cerebral that there's things going on under the surface. There's not slasher and blood and gore and stuff. It's psychological horror. That, and 
in here, there's psychological stories. There's a place for us to lose ourselves or to discover ourselves. And we're moving on into the scary world of fashion and Tim Walker especially. Now, I don't think of a single genre in photography where people can create weirdness <laughs> just for the sake of, of creating weirdness. And, and I love the fact that in Tim Walker's world, that there is some dark stuff going on <laughs> that, that is acceptable because apparently it's, it's fashion. Like Erwin Olaf, Tim Walker's photography isn't necessarily like kind of spooky or scary, but it's unusual and it's, and it's bizarre in the worlds that he has created. I love photography's capacity to create these worlds, to be able to be able to craft them, because unlike in, say, a painting that has, you know, like Edward Munch's scream or something like that, where it's quite clearly, you know, it, it's a painting and it represents a world in somebody's head. A photograph, especially when it's a well-constructed photograph, an elaborately staged photograph, feels like it is lifted from real life, like this is a scene that actually happened. And that's what I enjoy about Tim Walker's photography, is that we can almost, almost imagine that somewhere in this world, there is a lost country where this kind of thing happens all the time. A bit like the, um, the, the series The Prisoner. Granted, Tim Walker is a fashion photographer, but I feel that his photography opens up the door to a world that we're not supposed to see as mere mortals. We need to be part of the, 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 the fashion illuminati. Allow me, if you will, to step into the world of processing just, just very briefly to illustrate a point about creating artifice. For this, we're going to use Rankin. Yeah, I, a photographer, again, no, I don't really talk about too much on the channel, but certainly worth checking out. And again, all these photographers I will link to in the description box below. Rankin is a well-known British celebrity photographer, but the photograph that we're going to look at today is this photo of Marilyn Manson. And then for those of you who don't know, Marilyn Manson is that, that shock rocker from America, and he's very good at creating his own spooky or a mystique thing. But this photograph, and I love, you know, the, the way that the colors and everything on this looks because they feel so fake. And that's what I'm talking about with processing here. Often processing, when it's done badly, looks ridiculous. It looks like it's not done properly. It just, it's bad or it's overdone or what have you. And in this case, though, we're looking at this photograph of Marilyn Manson and he is a, the crown prince of being a fake personality. He has made and constructed something. I mean, his name is Brian, not Marilyn Manson, but, you know. And, and of course, the way that, that that Rankin has processed the image. So everything about this is smooth, plastic, you know, just it, it's, it's a, 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 an, an inorganic material. I, I suppose that might be the way of looking at it, is reminding us that the very figure being photographed is odd and weird. Segwaying neatly on from talking about processing is this photographer called Joyce Tenson, whom I have featured on the channel previously. Now her photography, is this weird mixture of, of practical effects within camera. As far as, as far as I can tell, like a lot of photographers, she's extremely secretive about her approach. But what I love about her photography is that it taps into something that's the very source of a lot of kind of spookiness and, and etherealness. And that's the idea of, of, of religion, as it were. And it's hardly surprising because she, she grew up next to a nunnery, I believe. So within her photography that has this kind of, I would say spooky feel to it, but certainly an otherworldly quality to it. Possibly like these are specters rather than ghosts of, of people from the past. That within there, like the photo, like Renaissance paintings, there are elements that are there to be discovered, to be teased out of a photograph. And I love this about her photography. It's certainly the first time that I was ever exposed to it. It was, it just had a haunting quality. There's the word. The word is haunting. That these figures 
like so many of the photographs that we've looked at today, don't exist in our world. They exist somewhere that we kind of recognize as our world, but not really. And that puts us on edge. That changes the way that we feel about the photographs. In a previous episode, I talked about finding inspiration for photography. And I think in this case, Joyce Tennyson has certainly drawn quite heavily from sort of religious iconography. If you want to find out more about where you can find your own inspiration in photography, I will link to a video after this brief word from today's sponsor. Back in the day, mistakes used to happen all the time when you were making a website. However, these days, Squarespace has made it so easy to create a stylish, modern, responsive website without any knowledge of coding needed. It's ideal for people who want to have their own online presence, but were always scared about the technical know-how that was needed to create a website. They have a simple drag and drop building system for the pages. You can add a page from a single click of a button. You can add a photo gallery with as much simplicity as you'd like. For a camera club, there is also the option to have a members only area where you could sell subscriptions. And indeed, if you wanted to sell your own prints to the worldwide audience, Squarespace have got it all for you. I remember making mistakes about trying to shift a domain to one of my hosting sites in the past. And again, Squarespace have got it all under control. So head on over to Squarespace by clicking on the link below, the squarespace.com forward slash the photographic eye you will get a 14-day free trial plus 10% off of any of your subscriptions when you choose to go live with your website. Thank you ever so much for watching. Here's the video that I talked about earlier. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Have a great Halloween and I'll see you again soon.